So once again, uh, we have a new problem. This time we have a shell uh, that's launched on a projectile. So this is a projectile and, and, and the shell is launched at an angle of 55 degrees. So this angle right here, uh, theta happens to be uh, 55 degrees. That's what happens. And, and we're also told that the mass of the shell is given as 12 kilograms. And also the initial velocity, this initial velocity of the shell uh, is given us 150 meters per second. So that's the information we're given. And so, you know, once the explosion happens, it reaches the highest point. So the fragment, uh, the, the shell, sorry, reaches the highest point. And then something happens. It, it explodes into two fragments. Um, one of them, okay, so you have a, a lighter fragment and the heavier fragments. Uh, they actually do reach the ground at the same time. We don't have air resistance, so no air resistance. Okay, so in this problem, we don't have any air resistance. Uh, the heavier fragment kind of goes back. I mean, you know, that's unusual, but it's what it is. So the heavier fragment lands back at the same point where uh, the shell was launched. So you can imagine an explosion happening and then I think it's kind of like some type of reverse momentum uh, where uh, it, it, it just goes back. It goes back and lands back right here. So, you know, we have two fragments. The, the heavier one, uh, which we're going to call A. This is A. So, you know, the mass of A is three times the mass of B. You know, that's that's what we're given in this problem. Uh, they're telling us that the mass of A is three times the mass of B. Uh, and the, the, initial, the initial mass of the uh, the initial mass of the uh, shell, uh, we could just call it M. You know, we're going to call it M. And uh, M happens to be 12 kilograms, as you can see. So this one is going to come back and land right there. And, and the second one continues all the way up until the end like that. And this is B, and B happens to have a mass uh, MB. Now, if the total mass is MA, plus MB, then it means that the mass of A, which is three times the mass of B, plus the mass of B has to be the total mass, which is 12 kilograms. And, and so uh, we can compute the mass of B, which happens to be, uh, you know, this is 12 kilograms equals to 4 MB. And then we divide both sides by 4. And so the mass of B happens to be 3 uh, 0 0.0 kilograms and we can always tell what the mass of a is because it's three times the mass of b so it's nine kilograms so those are pieces of information critical pieces of information that were given in the problem um our goal or the intention so this is the information that's given and we want to find we want to find two things in this problem just two things uh, the first thing we want to find out is that since we know the heavier fragment is going to land back right there, uh, we want to find out, you know, where where will the uh, lighter fragment uh, land. And then the second thing we're looking at is how much energy will be released in the explosion. How much energy is uh, released in the explosion. So that's 
uh, that's something we're looking at so you know it's uh it's a uh, you know at some point we're going to use the law of conservation of momentum and also we have to use the uh, equations of projectile motion okay so on the second page on the second page we know that this is the initial velocity of the problem and you can always decompose this one into the x component so vi uh, cosine theta and also decompose that into the y component so vy equals to uh, vi uh, sine theta that's the initial uh, velocity and then there is motion going on so you know this thing is going to go up until the maximum height so we want to know what happens at the maximum height uh, vx vx is v initial times cosine theta which is 150 uh, meters per second um, 150 uh, meters per second uh, times sine of 55 so we get you know round about 122 point uh, Eight seven meters per second, and then at the maximum height, uh, we can use the equations of motion. Uh, remember, v y equals to. Uh, so this is v y initial, and then this is v y final. That's v y final. We have to write it well. So this is vy final so vy final equals to um, a vy initial uh, and then remember this acceleration due to gravity so um, minus minus uh, a gt okay minus gt because you know gravity is pulling stuff downwards uh the at the maximum height at the maximum height uh, uh what the final velocity at the maximum height is going to be zero meters per second because it stops doesn't continue going up and so this is zero equals to a vy initial minus gt so a vy initial um obviously has to be um well the vertical component becomes zero at the top so vy initial has to be equal to g times t we want to solve for the time taken to reach the maximum height and we're going to call that uh t max becomes equal to vy initial over g uh, question is why do we need the t max we need the t max because it's going to help us determine this horizontal distance from this point uh, from this point right here up until that point so that distance uh, which is kind of like half the range um, uh, let's call it x max no uh, yeah x max I'm gonna call this x max so x max equals to um, the time the time or T max times the um, VX so T max is a VY initial of a G times VX which is VI cosine theta you know that's what we have in this problem uh, the, the the distance the x distance for that and so to compute this distance from right here up until right here that's part of the problem as you can recall we wanted to find where it's gonna land and also the energy expended so that's uh, vy initial happens to be uh, vi sine theta times vi cosine theta all over g so vi um uh, v or v initial 
is 150 meters per second. So this is 150 uh, meters per second. We have two of them. So it's this one and that one right here. Uh, so it's going to be squared. And then sine of theta, theta is 55 degrees. Uh, times cosine of theta, which is also 55 degrees. And then we divide that by uh, G, which is 9.8 meters per second. 9.8 meters per second. Or rather, meters per second squared. Okay, meters per second squared. Um, we plug in the numbers. We have to be very careful. This is 150 squared times sine of um, 55 times cosine of 55. Um, and then divide by 9.8. Um, so we get a value for x max. x max is this distance right here. That's part of the problem we're looking for. So x max uh, becomes equivalent to 1,078.73 meters. That's roughly the distance for x max. And then the other part of the problem is we want to get the remaining distance okay we want to get the remaining distance we're going to do that on the next page so you know uh, just a, like a quick sketch of the uh, 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 projectile so you know this it goes like that there's an explosion that happens part of the fragment goes back and then the second part of the fragment continues so we found out um, we found out what this distance is. We're calling it x max, and now we want to find out the remaining distance, um, which we're gonna call x range because it happens at the maximum range. Uh, using the the law of conservation of momentum, using the law of conservation uh, of momentum, we get to see that the initial momentum of the system. Um, which is the mass of the shell times the x velocity of the shell equals to the final. So ma uh, va in the um, va in the x direction plus mb vb in the x direction. Our goal is to get the value for of VB because that's what this fragment is. We have two fragments A and B. This is B. Uh, that's our target. Uh, we're told that A turns back and goes back, so it means that it's going to have a an opposite velocity. So this is mass of A times negative uh, VX like that um, uh, plus mass of B. Uh, VBX. Uh, we're simplifying the problem so we get to see that the mass of the shell, velocity of the shell, plus mass of A, velocity of X. This one moves to this side, the right, the left side, and becomes a plus, as you can see, uh, equals to mass of B of a velocity of B in the X. So the velocity of B in the X happens to be mass of uh, the shell, its velocity, the momentum of the shell. And then the momentum of A also, divided by the mass of B. Um, uh, this becomes 12 kilograms times the velocity of um, uh, the velocity of x, vx. Uh, we had to get that vx. Uh, let's see where vx is uh, right here. Well, this is 150, so, oh, that was Vy, that wasn't Vx. This is Vy. Got to check that, check that out. I uh, just want to make sure this is Vy. Okay, this one right here is Vy. Oh, wait. Vy. Vx is 150 meters per second times cosine of 50, or rather 55, 
and that gives us um, that gives us 86 meters per second round about 86 meters per second that's that's the information that we get uh, from right there uh, so that's the number we're going to plug in in this part 86 we're looking for 86 so this is 86 meters per second and then plus ma is nine kilograms if you go back you see ma right here happens to be uh, nine kilograms i'm going to plug it in times the velocity of b uh times the velocity of x again so uh, it seems that we're repeating that we could have simplified that problem anyways but that's fine and then we want to divide that by mass of b which is just three kilograms so this is going to help us get the velocity of b um so in the next page the velocity of b is in the x direction uh, happens to be of 602 meters per second we use the law of conservation of uh, momentum uh, once it explodes so it comes there explodes one fragment goes back the other fragment goes up until the end so we want to find this distance x range and uh, remember distance from a high school algebra is the space same as speed times time okay speed uh, uh, times time we did get what the time was from before so the time it takes to um uh, the time it takes this is 602 times 12 uh 12.5 uh, yes so the time it takes to get this fragment from right here up until the center is the same time it takes to get right there we did get the first time uh, which was this one right here uh, this was our initial time where, where is the initial time this one right here t max so t max is vy initial over g so we want to compute that so t is vy initial of a g vy initial as you can see from right here is 122.87 uh, meters per second divide that by 9.8 meters per second squared and we get the number for that as 122.87 divide by 9.8 that's about 12.54 seconds since speed, uh, distance is speed times time, x range, which is a distance, is going to be equivalent to uh, the speed that we got for b, which is 0. Uh, so x range equals to vbx times t, which is 602 meters per second uh, times 12.54 uh, seconds. So we get approximately 7547 that's the distance 7547.73 75 47.73 so we'll call the x range uh, is 7547.73 meters so now we, we want to get the total x total Remember, x total equals to x max. Uh, x max is this distance right here. Plus x range. Uh, x range, and I'm using range because it's the it gets to the to the maximum. I'm using x x max because this is the max height, and this is the range. I mean, you could choose to use anything you want, but, uh, you know, this is just the way I'm doing it. So 1078.73, 1078.73 plus 
both of these are in meters. And so we're able to get a distance. We'll do that on the on the other page where it's it's uh, there's more space. Um, So, you know, when we, we add these to the X marks and the X range, the X total uh, becomes equivalent to, so plus 10, 78.73. So the total becomes 8,626.45. So 8,000. Uh, there's a lot of rounding going on, so sometimes you might not get the exact answer. Uh, 0.46 meters. That's the first part of the problem where they were asking, you know, how where will the lighter fragment land? So we've dealt with that. And then now we want to find the energy released. So the energy released. Okay, the energy released. No. Oh would be pretty much the change in kinetic energy of the system. So the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is the two fragments. Um, so, you know, one half MA VA um, that's, that's the final VA um x remember vax uh, was right here vax is right there so we're using that and then plus one half mb vbx minus the initial is when the shell was intact together uh, vx one half the x squared all these are squared because it's the kinetic energy so you know we could simplify it let's pull out the one half from all over and then we have uh, we have m a and m b which is um m a is the big one so nine kilograms Okay, yes, 9 kilograms times VAX. If we go back, VAX was uh, given as negative VX. So VAX uh, is negative VX. And, uh, you know, that happened to be what? So VAX, that's the velocity in the X direction. Um, that becomes so nine times eighty six, and then three times six hundred and two. Um, so this has got to be twelve. So 9 kilograms times uh, VAX is uh, right here, 86, yes. So times 86 um, meters per second squared, like that, plus MB is 3 kilograms times um, VBX, if you can recall. You know, this is this is minus, but, you know, the 86 is a minus, but when you square it, it's always going to be a plus. So, you know, we don't have a problem with that. So this is 3 kilograms times VBX, which happens to be 
602 meters per second meters per second uh, you know that's the initial part this one too has to be squared and then you subtract oh you know what we don't have to uh, get that bracket yet and then you subtract because this one half was taken out the total mass of the shell is 12 kilograms so 12.0 kilograms times vx vx is the uh 86 meters per second and then we have to square that that's how we do the problem uh just plugging in the numbers um and so our final final answer for that the energy expended uh, let's do 9 times 86 squared plus um, 3 times 602 squared gives us a number minus 12 times 86 squared. And then divide by 2. Um, this gives us our final answer as, so we do it in the next page, the energy released uh, becomes 5,332, 512 joules, or you could say 532.512 kilojoules. That's the energy released in the process. So once again, you know, you have a projectile. It goes up until the maximum height. It splits into two fragments. One is A, the other one is B. So we want to find the distance that B travels. The first part is we have to get X max, the distance from this position up until the middle. We use the equations of motion, times, times velocity. But we have to get the time using another equation of motion, uh, this one right here. Uh, so we solve for time, we plug it into uh, x max and get a value for x max, which is this distance from here to there. And then in the next part, uh, we have to get the x range, which is the remaining portion of the distance. Uh, we still use the same time, but then now we have to use to get uh, the velocity of b, vbx. Uh, from the previous page, you could see that to get vbx, we had to use uh, the law of conservation of momentum, the initial equals to the final. Uh, we solve for VBX, plug it into uh, the X range and, and get the uh, the value for the X range. So we have those two values, we add them up. Uh, helps us get the total distance traveled by uh, fragment B. And then after that, we want to get the energy released. That's just the change in kinetic energy, the initial uh, final minus the initial. And the initial is when the shell was still intact. The final is when you have those two fragments. Uh, we simplify that problem and get the final energy released. Hope you enjoyed the problem. Feel free to send any questions or comments or uh, uh, ideas. And uh, uh, we'll be glad to respond. And have a wonderful day. Okay, thanks. Bye.